In this series, we're going to look around the most used parts of Chrome developer tools. And ultimately, this is going to be the very basics you need to improve your development. And this is mainly for front end development, but it also comes into uh, things like making Ajax calls, which is obviously on the front end, but it also allows you to then inspect content that you're uh, getting through on the back end. So generally, uh, we're going to go over the four things that you're most likely to use within Chrome Developer Tools. And the other thing to note is that uh, this is the same kind of concept for uh, tools like Firebug for Firefox. So even if you're not using Chrome, this should still be helpful. So we're going to kick things off with the Element Inspector or the Element Explorer which basically allows you to look at all of the markup on your page, how it's constructed, and we're also gonna be looking at styles as well. So first of all, let's just take a look at what kind of files that we're working with. So in my text editor, I just have a document laid out here. I have a paragraph. Uh, we obviously have all of the uh, basic tags that we would use. We have a title here, and I also have this style sheet just here within this CSS directory. So I'm going to go ahead and just link this style sheet in. So it's in CSS and it's app.css. And I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page. So that's changed the background color to a gray color. And we also have a style uh, attached to our paragraph here as well. Now, when you are developing and you are changing styles around or you're changing markup around, sometimes it's easier to do this within Chrome. So change all of the styles that you need to within Chrome you can go ahead and copy and paste those styles back over to your style sheet, or you can just edit elements on your page just to see what happens. So let's take a look at the very basics of bringing up your Element Explorer. Now, the main way I do this is just to right click on the page and hit Inspect Element. That's the quick way to do that. But you can also access it from this menu just up here. So, Obviously, right clicking and hitting inspect element is going to bring up your element uh, tab just here. So this panel here is going to show all of the elements on your page. So, for example, we can go into the head, we can go to our meta tags, title and our LinkedIn resources just here. Although these are a little bit less important to what we're going to be doing here. So we can uh, sort of traverse through these we can modify this content as well so let's just take a quick look at doing that and then we'll move over to this area here where we can uh, see all of our styles so for example if I wanted to change this text just here I can double click it and I can go ahead and perhaps add an extra exclamation mark hit enter and that will automatically be reflected uh, in the browser area just here so what we can also do is we can delete elements. So I'm just going to hit the backspace key that goes ahead and gets rid of that element. If I refresh, obviously that comes back because it's being served from the file. And what we can also do is right click here and edit text, which we've already seen. But we can also do things like edit as HTML. So we could go here if we wanted to and add an additional element in. So we could add a span tag just in here. And we could just say hello in there. So we click away from this area and that's automatically updated. So it's added that markup in there for you. So now that we've taken a little look around this, we're going to move over to this area here, which you're most commonly going to use for styles. So for example, the paragraph tag has a style attached to it. We can see that inside of the star sheet just here. The body has a background color as well, but we're gonna be focusing on this paragraph element. So the paragraph element here, we can see here, first of all, the user agent styles. And these are the default styles applied to this element uh, by the browser. We also have the computed styles as well, and we'll talk about this uh, thing here in just a moment. Uh, but you can see uh, that we have a display of block on this element. We have an automatic height. Uh, we have a margin uh, and we have a width to this as well. So these are just what's being computed in terms of the styles. Now, this here shows the box model. If you're not familiar with the box model, that's OK, I guess. I'll just explain what each of these represents as we go along. So this part in the middle is the width and the height of this element as it sits on the page. 
If we go up one, we see any padding on this. At the moment, we don't actually have any padding on this element. Now, if we were to go ahead and add, say, a padding left of 20 pixels, and we go ahead and refresh here, you can see that the padding now represents as a green uh, item or a green box just here, a 20 pixel wide box. And this is also updated here as well to show you the sizing. And this is really useful when you're working with positioning elements within CSS. Uh, you can see each of these uh, as uh, you sort of move your mouse cursor over them. So the border here, we don't have a border, but if we were to, we would see that border and we would see the uh, sizing uh, on this as well. And notice the positioning of this as well. So we've got 20 pixels padding on the left. If we were to add a right or a top border, we would see that here in place of these hyphens. Now we do have margin on this uh, paragraph. We have a margin top of 16 pixels. I've actually removed the bottom margin. So we see that as uh, nothing down here. But if we were to leave that as a default, we would see that. So this is all well and good, but really this doesn't help us in everyday life. What does help us is if we want to add additional styles to this paragraph, uh, we can actually do that from this area here. So we can see the styles here that have been applied via app.css. And what it also does is after the colon, it gives us the line number of these styles as well. We can actually click this and it will take us through to our sources tab which we're not exclusively going to be looking at in this series, uh, but it's useful to know that it's here. It just contains uh, all of the files that are basically being served from this page. So we can actually see this file now and we're automatically taken to line five where these stars have been applied. So it will be on the selector level. So going back over to our element explorer, how do we add or modify styles within this area? Well, we can do this by either uh, clicking the um, value of this uh, of this style and we can modify the value. So we can say, well, we want a, a 20 pixel margin on the bottom. If we click away from this, that then adds a 20 pixel margin on the bottom. And you can see that represented by the orange area on the page just there. And we can even add new styles. So say we wanted to just revert this back to zero and we wanted to do just a few more things on this paragraph. So let's say for uh, some reason we wanted to say we wanted the width of 50%. Let's say we want there to be a one pixel border and that be solid and black. We can do that. And then we could go ahead and say, well, uh, let's give this a foreground color of red. So just something really ugly. Well, we've now got all of our styles. We're not going to want to refresh the page because that, what that will do is it will pull through the app.css style sheet and reapply the styles that we actually have. But this is a really useful way to develop within the browser uh, so you can actually see your changes live on the page. And what you can then do is just go ahead and copy all of these or just the ones that you want. So I'm going to copy them to the clipboard. I'm going to go here and I'm just going to paste them in can just align these up if we want to. And there we go. So we've now got them styles in here. So everything has come through as expected. We can go ahead and refresh and the same styles are obviously applied because we've just copied them over to our style sheet. So that's a really useful way of developing. But what about this part just up here? Well, all this means is inline styles. So we could, for example, go ahead and set the height of this to 100 pixels. That will apply this on here, but you can see that it's added this style attribute in here. So you won't often use this, but it's useful to know that it's there just in case. So we're now gonna go ahead and look at these items just here. But for that, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to get rid of this style here. I'm going to remove this paragraph and create an anchor. And let's go ahead and say, click me. And we'll add a class in here as well, just so we can see what we do with classes. So I'm just gonna give this a class of link. You obviously wouldn't do this, but we'll just use it as an example. So I've got this uh, class here called link. I'm not gonna add any styles to it. We just have this click me link just here. So if I click on this, you can see that we've got that selector in here. We can just do uh, exactly what we want with it. So we can change the color to red if we want. 
uh, all that kind of stuff and we could just go ahead uh, and copy and paste these in as normal so it works in exactly the same way with classes or IDs any selectors you already have set up really but what we're going to look at now is this button just here this allows us to add a style in so basically create a new style rule so if for example you had on your page no uh, or in your CSS file no styles at all but you had a class of link here an easy way to just create a selector for this will be to click on this click on this here it will automatically append the element type as well you don't really need this in there but what you could then go ahead and do is just say well I want that to be color red you can go ahead and copy that head over here and just paste that in so it's as easy as that so it just makes it a little bit easier and you could of course just then go ahead and get rid of the element there and just include the class if you wanted to so pretty straightforward now the reason I've chosen a link here is because we have this uh, button just here and this allows us to toggle different uh, pseudo selectors on our element so for example if we were to do to just get rid of this and return to our standard link we know that when we've clicked on link uh, it will turn a, a purple color by default usually in browsers so for example if we were to toggle the visited state you can see uh, you might not be able to see this but very very slightly that's changing the color of that to from blue to purple so we can also uh, toggle hover which doesn't do anything in this case we can toggle active in this case it's going red so when I click this and hold my cursor in you can see that that's going red that's an active state and we also have a focus state as well which by default gives this blue uh, border type thing around here so this allows you to toggle different states so for example uh, what you could do is over in your style sheet you could say link hover now when I hover over this I want the font weight to be bold silly example but just to demonstrate so with your uh, predefined CSS styles so we've got our hover uh, pseudo uh, selector just here so we've got hover font weight of bold so now when I toggle a hover that toggles the styles uh, that are within my style sheet so whatever you've defined in your style sheet if you've overridden the default behavior here it's going to toggle them and you'll notice that that's being uh, made visible as well so if somewhere in your styles you had this and you wanted to go ahead and modify this you select the item here you click hover you go ahead and add styles to this as you want so we could change the color to red if we wanted to we could go ahead and copy and paste any styles that we had added as part of that as we saw before go ahead and refresh and then we have exactly the same uh, result here so in terms of the element explorer there is a lot more that you can do within this but generally when you are doing front-end development you're going to use what I've showed you just now the most these are the most used uh, areas of uh, this area here which is mainly markup and all of your markup on your page and then this area here which relates to your styles